grease from my si uh, central pore. And then this is uh, uh, high molecular weight viscoelastic, cohesive viscoelastic that's going in. That's to essentially keep the anterior surface planar. Through the side port, I introduce a 26 gauge needle through the capsule, capsule and uh, um, take out a little bit of cortical matter. This is flocculent cortex, and this is not going to come out in one single uh, go. And as I proceed with it, uh, there, is a, there are going to be pockets of cortex that needs to be evacuated. So that's the message I want to leave behind. Sometimes it's fluid cortex which just flows out. But here, as you can see, as I proceed with my uh, capsular rexis in a very controlled manner, and each time I go ahead and inject uh, um, cohesive viscoelastic in front of the area of the rexis where I'm going to be performing, and those pockets of uh, cortex is being continuously being removed. So you would see that it's running into bumps of cortex, and each time before proceeding, it's a good idea to manage the intralenticular pressure by evacuating a little bit of cortex and injecting cohesive viscoelastic in front. So that's how I go ahead, and, and obviously you often end up getting a smaller rexus in these situations. And as you can see over here, uh, I'm going ahead and polishing the rim of the anterior capsule. That's a hydro implantation of a single piece intraocular lens that's being done. That's a multifocal intraocular lens, and as you can see, many rings of this multifocal is hidden by the uh, capsular rexus margin. So obviously it's inadequate. So though I did a hydro implantation, I go ahead and introduce viscoelastic create a small nick over there at the margin of the capsular rexis and using a micro rexis forceps through the side port, which does not distort the uh, main port, doesn't allow the viscoelastic to flow out, I gently go ahead and uh, enlarge the capsular rexis. It's extremely important that the capsular rexis remains on top of the optic so that you have all the advantages of the posterior capsular or pacification prevention. And when I come into the sub area, I just go ahead and uh, go in through with my left hand, and I use the Sinsky hook to stabilize the uh, globe and uh, complete the enlargement of the capsular rexis. That's completed. And uh, I get a reasonably decent rexis with a fairly mature cataract. Not the best of the rexis, but I'm quite satisfied with it because there is a good overlap of the uh, optics of the lens without any runoff. Let's look at another situation. This is a fairly old video of mine, but explains a certain concept uh, quite nicely in the sense that it's not over till it's uh, completely done. And in this case of capsular rexis, as you can see, the idea is to keep the anterior surface of the capsule totally flat. Whenever there is a bulging forward, there is a tendency for the rexis to run off to the periphery, as you can see in this uh, cartoon with a skier on top. When there is a bulge, there's a tendency for it to run down to the valley. So the idea is to remove cortex and in, uh, inject viscoelastic, preferably cohesive viscoelastic, to keep the anterior surface as flat as possible. As you can see in this, it proceeds in a methodical manager, but in the last bit, I lose uh, patience and there is uh, escape of viscoelastic through the main port because I'm using Utrata forceps and you have the rexis running off into the periphery. So being aware of this and continuously keeping the anterior capsule flat is extremely important to achieve optimal results. Coming to a situation of pediatric cataract with the intumescence, obviously it's a double whammy in the sense that you have all the problems of a pediatric cataract, a very elastic capsule, at the same time a bulging uh, uh, anterior capsule. In these cases, extremely important, you do not only aim at a small rexis. As you can see, I proceed in a very methodical manner in uh, small bits of rexis being done each time. But the pull is not only towards the center, but also towards the apex of the cornea. And uh, basically, I'm just emphasizing on making a capsular rexis in these situations, simply because the rest of the uh, removal of the cortex and the intraocular lens implant is not really very difficult. In this particular video, I'm going to emphasize on this uh, uh, excellent procedure of Brian Little Maneuver. Please uh, watch as we proceed that at around uh, 7 o'clock procedure, uh, 7 o'clock position, there will be a tendency for the rexis to run off. In this, the normal tendency would be to go ahead and pull the rexis along the same direction as you're proceeding. But what you need to do in this situation is to lay the rexis back on and pull on the rexis. Right now, it's just proceeding smoothly. But here is a, here is a situation where I'm going to have a tendency for the rexis not to proceed in an arcuate manner, but it starts pointing out more towards the periphery. 
That's the danger signal. That tells you that this rexis is going to extend. You have to immediately recognize that. And this is nearly the situation where I'm ending up. Unfortunately, the magnification is not enough for all of you to make out very clearly. But I can make out that this rexis is pointing more towards the periphery at this point. So what I do is to inject some more amount of viscoelastic in front and then go in with the utrata forceps. And as you can see, I'm dragging it back towards the area from which the rexis came and also towards the center. This sort of rescues the rexis back on course, and I'm evacuating a little bit of cortex again, as I pointed out. Some amount of uh, uh, coercive viscoelastic is coming out. Then I go ahead and uh, complete the rexis and uh, proceed with the surgery. Maybe at the end of the uh, case, when you see the intraocular lens, as you can see over here, this is exactly the area where the rexis tended to run off. And here, what I did was to play the rexis back on, uh, flat on the surface, and pull the rexis in this direction also inwards. You do not pull in this direction because then the tendency for running out will be greater. So you pull back in the direction which you came and towards the center. And this is, goes by the name of Brian Little Maneuver. And this helps whenever you are faced with a situation like this. Let us look at another situation, a Morgagnian white cataract. This is a um, condition where you would feel that the uh, uh, lens get, becomes decompressed very quickly because the lenticular matter just flows out. So, but here what you are phasing out with a fairly tremulous anterior as well as a posterior capsule and a hard nut of a nucleus. And obviously here there is a, because of the uh, tendency for the posterior capsule to trampoline and you do not get a good hold on this nucleus, sometimes there is risk of damaging the posterior capsule. In these situations, it's a good idea to even inject the uh, uh, intraocular lens into the capsular bag as I did just now. That acts as a scaffold and using adequate amount of dispersive viscoelastic to provocate the endothelium, you go point out your phaco probe as posteriorly as possible, go ahead and complete the surgery and this one way of protecting the posterior capsule in these situations. Uh, triple rexis, this is a, uh, just the way you can manage the rexis. Arup also showed something like this. And as you can see, an uh, initial nick is made. A small, as far as you get a complete uh, round rexis or it's arcuate, the tendency for it to extend is not there. So that's a very small rexis that has been made. And now I'm evacuating the cortex. Mind you, the flocculent cortex is not just in front of the lens, but it's also behind the lens. So you decompress, slightly enlarge, and then go ahead with the uh, removal of the lens material, uh, the nucleus material chopping because these are fairly uh, easy to crack. And uh, once the, uh, before the intraocular lens implantation, I often prefer to do it after the intraocular implantation, you can do a third time enlargement of the rexis so that the rexis that you finally end up with is about 5.5 millimeters or so. It's often said that uh, the, it's a boom to have a elastic platform, but I would just like to point out a couple of problems I face. It's most often a situation like this, a rexis that has been made. You stain these capsules on the table just because you want to know where exactly the capsule is. And most often you are pleasantly surprised to see, as in this situation, it's a free-floating rexis. You don't have to even have to uh, take the cat to remove it, but as you introduce the FACO probe, it just moves in. But it's not always a condition like this. You can see another intumescent cataract with the lens bulging forward into the anterior chamber. And here again, I go ahead and use a capsular rexis, uh, the elastic platform. The rexis is made in just about 1.2 seconds. I thought it could, I'll have a complete rexis, but as you can see, the rexis in this case is completely disrupted. Just the initial gush of the cortical material from the capsular back disrupts the capsule. So ob observing all the principles that was enumerated in the earlier talk, we have to go ahead and do the surgery. And because flaps of rexis were still available, I could go ahead and place a, a multifocal intraocular lens between these flaps. Please concentrate in this particular area in this case. It's a capsular rexis that has been made, but you can see there is a skip over here. here. And you have to identify that area. Obviously, the capsular rexis is not complete over there. If you just pull on the rex this case in a down-up maneuver, there will be a rexis runoff. So essentially, what I do is to circumvent that area. So as you can see over here, there's something like a bulge over here. That's because that's where I took my rexis around the skip area, which had been left behind with my uh, laser. Now, uh, uh, what if at all the 
there is a excess runoff. Obviously, in these cases, most often, depending on your experience, you can go ahead and still do a, a FACO emulsification. Last of my videos, Dr. Titial. And what I do is to just uh, uh, cut off the uh, redundant piece of cortex. I, in these situations, I like to do a, a stop and chop maneuver, where in a very controlled manner, losing low parameters, I create a central trench. And then I rotate it by 180 degrees so that the direction of my splitting of the nucleus, as you can see over here, I don't even use the FACO probe. I use two different Sinsky hooks with the deep grooves, go into the depth of the groove and cut them into two uh, heminucleus. We are not stressing the area where the rexis ran off and subsequently do most of my FACO emulsification. Most often these are soft cataracts. Bring them into the anterior chamber and with adequate uh, cover of dispersive viscoelastic, go ahead and remove the uh, um, nucleus using short bursts of energy. As you can see, the amount of energy that I'm using is quite minimal and an intraocular lens implantation is still possible. Having um, uh, systems like uh, active sentry, etc., as to the safety features. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Ramamurthy. Uh, we know that uh, these are uh, one of the most wonderful videos which can be you know, uh, seen. And the tips he gave us how to come out with the, those difficult situations, how to handle those uh, intumescent uh, raised intralenticular pressure cases by doing a capsular rex in those cases. Even you have a runaway capsulotomy, capsular rexes, how you manage these cases wonderfully shown. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ramamurthy, sir. Uh, wonderful teaching.